A reality TV show back in 2003, and it was all one big joke meant to shock the world, insult trans people, and insult the people who were contestants on the show. And this story is actually absolutely insane. Miriam Rivera. Oh, there's a lot to break down on this. A transgender woman. The men didn't know. They thought it was a dating show. And then on TV, this individual announced that they were actually a man. The words they chose to use. And it resulted in absolute chaos. Apparently, one guy was smashing up the set. One guy was saying it was going to destroy his career. People were furious. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. Um, I would call it sexual assault. They filmed this show where this guy is like all these people are trying to date Miriam, win a dating reality contest. Come on. We know how those shows work. But the gag was that no one knew it was a male that they were hooking up with. A person, this transgender uh, Miriam Rivera, actually said they were a man. Their words. I think that's sexual assault. To deceive someone into engaging in sexual activity with another person they normally would not do, I, I would say is it's, it's, it's sexual assault. And it's a fine line, um, but there are a lot of guys who lie about their careers and their jobs, and I, I think that gets close to it. But I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, right? The argument would then be, if a guy's at a club and claims he's a millionaire to convince someone to go back with him and he lied about everything, I think there is there is like there's there's something in there fraudulent to manipulate people. I don't know how you how you deal with this, though. What I would say is there is a big difference between tricking someone into engaging in adult activities with someone they're not, you know. With the opposite or, or the same sex. Imagine if there was like a lesbian woman and they did something like this. Like, I just it's just not OK. Let me let me read for you the story. This is crazy. And uh, there's a new documentary coming out in the UK about it. Sky TV. They say this is the moment that Sky's cruel dating show came crashing down as six male contestants were told they'd secretly been dating a transgender woman for weeks. The 2003 Sky One British reality series. There's something about Miriam. Let me uh, let me play the clip for you. You can hear for yourself. Here we go. I'm not a woman. I was born as a man. (laughs) All the guys laughing in the background. Now, why would they make this show? Especially back then. They knew it's shock content. They knew it would be shockingly offensive. It would be emotionally destructive. And that's good TV, right? Now, these people on this show, guess what? Reality TV stars, they're actors. Let me read for you what happened. This is crazy. They say the punchline of the show was an incredibly cruel one. After Miriam chose her winner, she told the unsuspecting contestants that she was a transgender woman who had not undergone gender affirming surgery. New Channel 4 series Miriam, Death of a Reality Star, explores the consequences of the producer's decision to exploit the boys and Miriam's identity for shock value. The second episode of the show, titled The Truth, airs on Tuesday night and shows the moment the producers had been waiting for when winner Tom Rook was finally told the truth. Man, it's just so evil. But the naive producers had underestimated the sheer anger of the boys when they realized they'd been lied to and the emotional damage it would go on to cause. After choosing Tom, then 23, as her winner, Miriam told the boys, I tried to be honest with all of you as much as I can. Yes, I'm from Mexico. I'm a model. I'm 21. She says, but Tom, I really love spending time with you. I love men. I love being a woman, but I'm not a woman. I was born as a man. That's the, that's the, that's his words. I'm going to say this right now. If you say I'm not a woman, I was born a man. Your pronouns are he, him, his, there you go. His words, which were, which uh, friends believe were scripted by the TV crew were initially met with laughter from the five other boys and pure shock from Tom in the reality show described as the most explosive dating experience of a lifetime. Tom had grown close to Miriam and even been filmed getting intimate with him and kissing him passionately. He was left speechless, but he couldn't contain his shock as his eyebrows raised in disbelief and he began uncomfortably scratching the back of his head. Here is a male who was tricked by the show and this trans person into engaging in adult sexual activity with a biological male. Kind of rapey. He was left speechless, scratching the back of his head. Crew member Leo McCrea recalled in the documentary, it was so incredibly uncomfortable. 
It felt like all the air had been sucked out of the room. And Tom, he was gasping and looking around at all the deceit. They say, although Tom initially said he'd still go on the yacht trip because we're all good friends here, a behind the scenes interview revealed his true thoughts. He said, I'm very shocked and I wouldn't want to spend a week on a boat with someone I didn't trust and deceived me. I was being honest in that house and he wasn't. He was lying to everyone and he doesn't have that right. And I'm going to stress this. It says in brackets, speaking about Miriam, Miriam said on the show, I am not a woman. I was born a man. I don't know why Daily Mail is still using she, her pronouns. If the person identifies as not a woman, as being born a man, if they said I am a woman, but I was born a man, I'd understand them making the pronoun argument. But this person basically said they're not a woman, that they literally said it. Why, why is anyone having the pronoun argument? After the initial shock, the boys grew angry. Former contestant Toby Green recalled that runner-up Scott Gibson went berserk. Things began to spiral out of control. A martial arts instructor, he began to smash the set and even chased the director around the pool. When psychiatrist Dr. Gareth Smith spoke to the boys to try to calm them down, they chillingly blamed Miriam, one person saying that they were going to kill her. Wow, no way. Tom, who was an actor, like, not good. Tom, who was an actor, was worried about how the show would affect his career, saying, I can't be a gay actor. The producers had employed a series of underhanded tactics to deceive them, including offering them an indecipherable contract, deliberately avoiding the use of pronouns, and even eliminating contestants if they began to suspect the truth. As a result, the boys were furious. The contestants were flown back to London, where they decided to launch an injunction to stop the show from being aired. The men alleged conspiracy to commit sexual assault, defamation, breach of contract, and personal injury in the form of psychological and emotional damage. They eventually settled for an undisclosed amount, and the show aired the following year. The massive scandal reportedly cost Sky TV three quarters of a million pounds, according to claims in the documentary. But the producer's naivety was also shown in their treatment of Miriam herself, who tragically passed away in 2019, which Mexican authorities held to be suicide. Wow. Although her husband said it was murder. You know what, man? That's what I was saying. Look, we, we have friends of the show who are trans. I got, I got no beef. Live your life. Be happy. Try to, try to survive. Try to succeed. I think we should protect children in this regard. But people need to understand that what the left pushes, and especially stories like this, this is not a left thing. This is a capitalist thing. This is somebody trying to make shock content with reckless disregard for people. Dylan Mulvaney is no different than this. Exploiting trans people making it into a spectacle, spectacle in a game for money. Unlike the boys who had a psychiatrist brought for them, Miriam was given no support. Her words after the finale was, fil uh, was filmed re revealed just how uh, vulnerable. I'm gonna, I, I can't say she for a person who says they're not a woman. His words and how he was feeling at the time. He said, I went back to the hotel and I was shaking from the experience. I didn't know if they were going to punch me or attack me. I wasn't out to hurt anyone's feelings. No one in the crew would talk to me. They were all my friends during filming, and now they don't want to know me. Uh, maybe it's because you basically assaulted these guys and lied to them. That's crazy. Like, imagine you to show where a guy raped somebody and then was like, I can't believe that they were so mad and they didn't want to talk to me. It's like, dude, <laughs> like, come on. Dr. Smith was brought in to offer support for the boys reflected. I had been brought in to ostensibly look after the boys. No one had given thought to how Miriam might feel. They reveal her coming out was to the world, and as far as I was aware, Miriam hadn't been psych tested. How would he deal with the rejection, not just from who he picked, but everyone who thought trans people were freaks? They sold him a dream without anybody telling him what could go wrong. I thought he's vulnerable. He's had a really a hard life, like a bird with a broken wing. I, I gotta be honest, they're using female pronouns for a person who said they're not a woman. So I don't know. I don't. I you know whatever. It's a quote, so maybe I should just read the quote. But her father, Fernando Mendoza, never accepted his identity and even brought in a minister to the family to exercise the demons from his body. Left traumatized by the ordeal, Miriam fled home to Tijuana on the U.S.-Mexico border, where he began working in a club. Despite the fact that Miriam was clearly vulnerable, the TV executives who worked on their Something About Miriam continued to defend their decision in the Channel 4 documentary. When asked how she felt about the deception, production ex uh, executive Joe Josen said, I don't, didn't feel anything. I'm in the business of making television shows. I didn't feel anything about the format that I felt was bad or wrong. I didn't feel that way. I really didn't. Do I think it went beyond any moral co codes of conduct? No. Could you tell, they ask. And this was in 2020. Uh, this was in 2003. It's wild. Man. 
a documentary 21 years later, breaking down how they how they did this. And today, this debate is now mainstream. It's fascinating. They say that uh, if you're a male attracted to someone who looks female, you're straight. But at the same time, when a guy who was a red pillar said, if you're attracted to a woman who's muscular and manly, you're you're gay. They said, no, you're not. You're straight. They're basically saying there's no straight and gay. Here's the reality of what I actually think is worth talking about in this story. The exploitation for points, be it Dylan Mulvaney or these producers 21 years ago. Entertainment, that's the name of the game. Let me know what you think. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.